rolling. All right, welcome back, guys, and welcome to the Maple Meeting. I'm the host, Kyle Anderson, and I'm a student here at Stockton. I'm majoring in business studies and have a minor in marketing, and I have two guests with me here today. Hi, my name is Chris Wood. I'm also a Stockton student, and I am a major in criminal justice here at this fine university. Uh, hi, my name is John Ross. I'm also a student here at Stockton University. I'm a history major. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. So what you guys think about the first semester? What were your thoughts? How had the semester go? I know it was pretty tough. It's not like the last two years we've had here. It's junior year, senior year is right around the corner, so it's definitely getting harder. Yeah, just like you said, it's been getting harder every year, of course. I mean, happy we're done with all this COVID madness. We're back, yeah, to, normal. Definitely. We're back to normal, basically, but, you know, still grinding. Yeah, normal is for sure, but, you know, it is tough. But I feel like each year I do learn more and more, like, different study habits and whatnot. But, you know, sometimes things do get in the way. How do you guys feel like you usually prepare for, like, any tough exams? I like to retain my information in class and kind of just use my knowledge and um, just go into tests with an open mind, kind of. And that's, it's failed me a few times, but most of the time it works out. Yeah, I've been noticing, I've been writing a lot more stuff down than I have the last two years, so that definitely helps when it comes to studying. I take a lot more notes, I pay attention more in class. Um, yeah, I just want to finish strong, get my degree. Yeah, it's crazy how, like, how we say we study, we do all that, but sometimes it's the littlest things in our day that just get in the way of that degree that you're searching for. Like, sometimes I'll wake up, it's gloomy outside, I just want to hang in and just yeah. put on a good film or something. That definitely. always gets my mind away. Sometimes you just need a good me day. Yeah, sure. definitely. The semester was a little tough, and I was just kind of watching movies on my free time. I checked out different movies like Scarface and The Dirt and Inception. There's great movies out there, I can't even lie. There's so many movies, but where do you watch these movies on? What platforms? There's so many to choose from nowadays. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they, they have the package deals now, but I only have Netflix and Hulu and I think, uh, what's the Amazon one? Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, Prime, Video. Prime, Prime, Prime Video. Prime Video. Yeah, they got it all. What do you guys watch on? Um, I'm a big Disney Plus fan, you know, I think that's the streaming service people don't look at because, you know, it's geared for the children, but, you know, animated movies tell a lot more to the tale than the artwork it's showing, you know, they tell great stories, like Toy Story, for example. Woody is one of the greatest protagonists of all time, and any franchise from Toy Story 1 to 4, it's his story, uh, and it's just... Yeah. incredible he's so selfless he cares about others he wants to make andy happy he wants to make buzz happy like even though it's an animated kids movie it's a powerful film and it that's one of my favorite go-to's for sure absolutely yeah definitely has a message behind it and it's really cool how the director just had that idea to put toys he's in a toys, movie yeah, an animated film that's great what about you uh john <sighs> You know, I'm just a, just a big fan of films in general. I do love animated films, of course. One of my favorite animated films ever is Ratatouille. Um, hey. Something about just that, that movie and the message behind it, I think it's really beautiful. I think the soundtrack is excellent. I think I just am really a big fan. And then on a whole different side of things, I'm really a big fan of Forrest Gump. I know it's a classic, and I'm sure mm -hmm. most people haven't seen it before, but I think it's truly one of my favorites. As a history major, it really speaks to me on so many levels because of how much history is included into the movie and how like historically accurate it really is, even though I'm sure he wasn't doing all that. But um, yeah, I just think it's really excellent. Yeah, they did a great job directing that film and shooting that film. Sure. So many awesome scenery shots. And, sure. you know, my favorite movie, personally, is Scarface. I just found it probably last summer, I think. My first time watching it, I bought the film, the gold version off Amazon. I bought it in disc because I was like, I need this. I watched this so many times. And since then, I probably watched it like eight times, I want to say. It's just great. I love uh, Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer and Steven Banner. They're all in it. 
and it has a great storyline and it's pretty accurate it's great i love it yeah it's a great film legendary definitely can't go wrong with that but if you hear the movies we said toy story forrest gump and scarface all completely different. different films but one thing i point out from all those how important a main character is Definitely. character development and really like you don't want a boring character it's, the story can be great but if the cast isn't right like the character's telling isn't there you're not invested you don't really care so true that's why it's like saying oh what's your favorite movie that's a very tough question but you can always pick up the similarities when Definitely. this question is popped up yeah, it really is important. Uh, the actors involved too, like you said, Michelle Pfeiffer and like Al Pacino, and like of course like in Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks, as we all know, is like, yeah. You know, yeah, and Woody, Tom Hanks, Woody, yeah, yeah. Hanks, of course, and to make that connection. Exactly, I didn't even realize yeah, that. that. It's definitely important when you have a main character like that. The audience has some towards some kind of emotion towards that character mm -hmm. to like want them to do good or want them to do bad whatever movie it is but you have to definitely have that connection you're right yeah. like in uh in scarface like he starts off as a cuban refugee and it somehow got his green card and then started working at a dishwasher on the side of the road at like a, a little hot dog stand or something like that and he just saw right across the street this this uh, nice restaurant or bar or pub or whatever it was and seeing all the nice cars and nice people wearing nice clothes and they were all walking in there and he just, he, he wanted it really bad. And the whole movie is basically him working his way up to becoming basically what is Scarface and, and he goes nuts. He almost loses his mind in the process of it. But that's definitely like, you feel for him, right? When you start watching the movie, you're like, wow, this guy's really working his way up the ladder here. He started from nothing and he really made a whole business. I mean, yeah. he is a drug lord, so you shouldn't look up to him, but it's definitely, you feel for it. Yeah, it really plays with your emotions, that movie, because you feel good for him because he's, you know, he's coming from poverty and now he's making all this money, but you see that even with all this money that it can't buy happiness and it yeah. just shows throughout the movie, like, Regardless of how rich he is, he still has these problems, and his occupation is really like the death of him, obviously. Yeah. At the end. It's crazy. Yeah. I find it awesome when movies, like the main character, like what they do, you know it's not right. It's like a vigilante type. Like, right, definitely. Those are like, wow, does that make me a bad person for rooting for this guy? But I know it's for the greater good, the mm -hmm. deeper meaning. Yeah. It all depends on what the writer of the story is, and I feel like with Scarface, such a crazy tale like is the writer of that movie picturing himself as the main character yeah. and he's just mm -hmm. creating his imagination i don't know so much thought goes into yeah. anything so like that Agreed. i love i love anything like that and I, I think one of my favorite examples of that of all time is the show breaking bad it's a perfect example oh. the, the man is is just this regular guy and all of a sudden he finds out he has cancer and he has to doesn't have to but he starts you know devoting his life to to selling drugs and making drugs it's absolutely insane yeah. and you still feel for him and you still feel like you're rooting for him the first time you watch it even though you know that he's murdering people he's selling narcotics like this all these crazy things and it's just it's beautiful how they can do that yeah in a show like you have seasons you can build it up where like in a movie you're only working with two hours three tops and no one really wants to sit through that so i feel like comparing movies and shows like they have similar qualities the good characters the good cast but how they go about it it's so much more interesting you can really get invested in each individual character like in a show like personally i'm a big game of thrones fans so many story pieces to follow and it's a lot but since you have so many seasons, it all makes sense. And that's just genius of people working behind it. Like when people start a show, do you think like they know what they're going to do? Or is that why there's always the pilot episode? That always yeah. question me. There's always the one that uh, really breaks the edge and makes people watch it. There's certain episodes like that. Seasons will just come at you. You'll hear people talking about it. The first two seasons are really good, and the next one's following, it kind of slows down, but I think it just matters. Um, yeah, and with Game of Thrones, they have so many character development lines where you have to kind of follow along in a season and understand each character and 
the sides. Agreed. Yeah, I think that that's that's a really like interesting thing to think about with TV shows and movies because, like, when you think about it, do you really believe that they have this whole entire storyline mapped out already, and they're they're just filming the seasons and they know exactly what's gonna happen? Because at the end of the day, things could happen outside of like filming, and you who knows like yeah. what could happen to actors like. It happens all the time. Something happens to them, and then you have to change the story completely. And yeah, it's, it's a crazy thing to think about. I mean, you guys heard with the Heath Ledger doing the whole the Batman movie and playing the Joker. He didn't even watch the entire film. He died. He passed right. away. And there's a lot of conspiracy theories saying that I don't know the Joker kind of got to him a little too much, and he fell into like a depression kind of state. But yeah, it just happens. Paul Walker. I mean, they. What were they on the sixth Fast and Furious, fifth yeah. Fast and Furious, and then he got in a car accident and passed away. You never really know. So most recently, now with the Black Panther movie Definitely. and yep. that Chadwick, like I, I know they had the plan. I guess like the, what we were saying, do they have a plan? I guess they knew they were gonna do a Black Panther mm-hmm. too, but I'm sure they didn't plan on doing it without the Black Panther definitely. himself. No, they probably definitely had to rearrange it somehow, but. Yeah, there's just so many great movies out there. It's it's a really good topic to talk about. It's a great way, to, like we said, like sometimes when the semester gets rough, like you need to take some me time and turn on a good show, turn on a good movie, mm-hmm. something to take you away. And and I feel like you do learn a lot from movies. You don't just watch them as a distraction or mm-hmm. something to keep you away from work. You or definitely just like do background get stuff noise. out of it. Yeah, yeah for I, sure. I like what you said there, take you away, where it's like, you can just have a little escape for a few hours where you're not thinking about your own problems and you're just worried about what's happening in front of you and like what these people are going through. And you're also learning from it, like you said. Yeah, I, mean, I definitely learn a lot from TV shows and movies. And I actually took a class last semester where we just watched movies and TV shows. And it did teach me a lot. Goodfellas and I don't know, there's so many different lessons and in movies and shows that you can learn and just like you were saying Chris like the similarities between Toy Story and Forrest Gump and Scarface is that they have that main character that everyone loves and I mean they could be different in all different kind of genres but at the end of the day it's that connection that you make so it was a lot of fun talking to you guys today thanks Chris thanks John yeah, it was great to be here yeah, it was a so, pleasure been yeah, waiting for this forever. Sure. Yeah, Glad to have the lot. opportunity. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, guys, uh, stay tuned for the Maple Meeting next week. We will have the special guest, Patrick Mahomes, here. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the podcast, please leave a comment and like down below. And we have a follow in our Twitter if you want to stay tuned for next week's episode.